These are the largest caverns in the eastern U.S. and maybe even the most beautiful. What's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. I'm Amon Luthra and today we are going to go check out the Luray Caverns which is on the western side of Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. It's $32 per person to come here or $16 if you have kids. There's also a garden maze and a rope adventure park which you can check out here which you have to pay additional fees for but today we're just going to check out the caverns and some other amenities that are included with the ticket. I'm super excited so let's just go ahead and get into it. Check it out, there's literally no line at all here, which is amazing. So try to come here on a weekday if you can. The Luray Caverns are a result of 400 million years of geology. There are stalactites and stalagmites that are multiple stories tall, and some sections of the caverns have ceilings that are 10 stories high. It is so vast that the National Park Service has made it a registered national landmark. So for those of you that don't know, all of the caverns right here are made out of limestone. Specifically, these caverns are made out of calcite, which is a crystallized form of limestone. And in its purest form, it looks kind of like this when it's white. Isn't that super cool? The largest structure in the caverns that is pure calcite is called Titania's Veil, which you can see right here. Doesn't it look so cool? right here is Dream Lake which is the largest body of water in the caverns and check it out you can see the stalactites from the ceiling reflecting on the water isn't that so cool that I forgot to mention to you guys is that I'm finally filming on my GoPro Hero 10. All of the videos that you've seen beforehand on this channel were shot on my iPhone 11 and I was ready for an upgrade. And I'm still a beginner when it comes to using this camera, so please comment down below if there's something that you think that I should know about this camera. Because one thing that I've already realized is that it's not exactly great in low light. But hey, I just got started with it, so there's a lot I don't know. right here is Sarakin's tent and you can see a stalactite right here which fell from the ceiling almost 7,000 years ago. That stalactite that you see lying horizontally is there because of an earthquake that happened almost 7,000 years ago and it weighs almost 170 tons. Sarakin's tent has stalactites that are so thin and delicate that you can actually see the light through some of them like this one over here.
totem poles and all of these stalagmites right here, they look like art formations made by the indigenous people of the Pacific Northwest. And now we're here at Giants Hall, which is home to the largest room and column in the entire caverns. This right here is Double Column. Double Column is 47 feet tall, which is twice the height of a giraffe. Maybe that's where the double in the name comes from. After you've seen Giants Hall, you should head down the walkway in this direction to the cathedral. And it's home to the largest musical instrument in the world, which is the great stalactite organ player. The organ player is considered to be the largest musical instrument in the world because it spans across three and a half acres of the caverns. And the way that it makes music is just by gently tapping the stalactites on the ceiling. Check out the sounds that it makes. You know, one thing that's really interesting that I'm realizing is that a lot of people have had their weddings right here in the caverns. Imagine telling people that you got married in a cave. Comment down below if you would do that. Right before you head out of the caverns, you're gonna pass by the wishing well. And this was the first wishing well that I've ever seen that wasn't man-made. It has this turquoise look to it because of the way that the water reacts with the copper pennies. Some people decide to throw dollar bills into the water. So this guy right here was actually taking the dollar bills out of the water so that they still have value. The water is six feet deep and it has collected over a million dollars since 1950. Imagine if Mr. Krabs was here. So even though we're done exploring the caverns, there's still a lot more that comes with your ticket right here. And the first one up is the Car and Carriage Museum. So let's go over there right now. There are more than 75 historical vehicles at this museum. It just gives you that feeling that life was just really simple back in the day. One of the most impressive vehicles is this Mercedes-Benz from 1897, and it's still in operating condition. It's so big that it probably would not fit in your garage. And another one that's really cool was this 1925 Rolls-Royce, which was once owned by Ruta Valentino, who was a silent film star from back in the day. literally so much history for you to learn about all of these cars and wagons and everything. It's great. There are two more stops to go on this trip and the first one is called Toy Town Junction, which sounds kind of cute. So let's go over there right now. Toy Town Junction is a collection of trains and toys that were given to Richard Warden, who is now a retired Methodist minister. He got his first train back in 1941 from his parents as the US was recovering from the Great Depression. And now he shares all of his toys and trains with all of us so that we can appreciate them too. It sounds like he had really good parents. Love this 
enjoy so much. It reminds me of when I used to watch Thomas the Tank Engine all the time when I was a kid. Did you watch that when you were younger? Comment down below if you did. Well, it has started to rain outside a little bit, but we still have one more spot to go see, and that is the Shenandoah Heritage Village, and it's right across from Toy Town Junction, so let's head over there right now. The village is a seven acre recreation of a farming community from the 19th century. You can find a bunch of historical buildings over here. Some of them were preserved while others were rebuilt one brick at a time. In the summer when it's warmer, you'll be able to find cottage style gardens around here as well as a vineyard. The best part about this house is that you can see all of the mountains in the background. Isn't that amazing? Well, what a day it has been today. We saw the caverns, we saw the carriage museum, we saw Toy Town Junction, and we saw the Shenandoah Heritage Village. I'm dripping wet right now, but honestly, I don't care. Today was such a good day. If you're still down for some fun, I've heard that the town of Luray has some really nice ice cream, which I cannot have because I'm vegan, but I'm sure it's super good. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe down below. I make outdoor adventure videos just like this one pretty regularly on this channel. Although I guess this was technically an indoor adventure, so if that's something that you're into, make sure you turn on your notifications as well. I will definitely make a future video of me hiking in the Shenandoah Mountains right here, so be on the lookout for that. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. You guys have a great day.